thank you, David, for the intro, and thank you, Katrina, for a very interesting talk. And I was just saying yesterday, I was presenting at another meetup, and I said, this is kind of a weird situation because I don't get any visual feedback from you. Um, but I figure the more comfortable you get in giving presentations, at some point you need an extra layer of challenge, and I think this is my extra layer of challenge this time. Um, so yeah, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever um, you are right now. Um, yeah, as everybody, I'm very sad that I can't be in New York right now, but happy to welcome you to my living room in Berlin where I've been working from for 13 weeks now. And um, I picked my topic before the pandemic happened. But when I was working on the slides, um, I looked at what I presented last year. So for everybody who has been here last year, you heard a talk from me as well. And when I was going through to get the templates and the design I had, I um, chose to keep the first two pictures because they fit here as well. And my topic today is a blended learning approach, integrating an app and live classes. As you can see, I work with Babbel, which is an online language learning app. But if you're not familiar with that, that's not a problem because my focus will be on just integrating a language learning app, and there are quite a few out there, into a traditional classroom setting. So I hope this will um, still be interesting for you. So the first picture I have is this one, and it's pretty interesting right now because like pre-pandemic times um this was the reality in in yeah many um learning situations right now i think it's nowhere in the world but it might come back anyway what we can see is that especially in adult education learning in the workplace teaching and learning shifted a bit from this what you see there from an in-class setting to this um, so people learning on the go, people learning on their mobile phone, on a tablet. Um, there are many reasons for this. There are a lot of online resources you can learn with. And so blended learning is a term we've heard in the last years uh, coming up more and more. And um, I always like to bring everybody on the same page. So I just copied from Wikipedia the um, yeah, definition of blended learning. So blended learning is an approach to education that combines online educational materials, for example, apps, and opportunities for interaction online with traditional place-based classroom methods. Um, so what um, when we talk about blended learning, we have several different um, things we could think of. And different blended learning options could be in-house language classes in combination with an app. Again, in these um, times, also in-house classes have been moved online. And for everybody here who is or has been working as a teacher or has some teaching experience, we know that it, it's quite a difference whether you um, teach in front of a class or online. Um, but let's just take it as, as um, I prepared it before all this happened. So some companies have in-house language classes um, or you have a language class where you go at a language school and you can have that in combination with an app. Or you could have online live classes in combination with an app. And as I said, online live classes can be different and you can have different setups like one-on-one -on -one classes where it's only you and the teacher or you have group classes and you can have different interactions there. Or you can have a flipped classroom where you use an online uh, learning app in order to prepare for class. So the teacher would ask you to do a few lessons beforehand and then come prepared to class. And then you would go through what you've learned at home and practice this in class. So now, um, what we did together with the Swiss Hotel Management School is we crafted a blended learning approach. So the Swiss Hotel Management School is in Switzerland. It's a school where you can study a bachelor and a master in hotel management. And they have some 2,000, 2,200 students from all over the world who um, study languages and also business courses on hotel management and everything they need to know. And so many of the students are learning English, French, Spanish, and German. And their school year, or let's say the bachelor, is three years long. 
And it would look like that, that half a year they would be in class studying, the other half year they would go for an internship, work at a hotel. Ideally, they would study French and then go to France um, to practice what they have learned, but the reality is this is not always the case. And now, so what the hotel school was aiming for was having online resources to learn along with the classroom. Um, so they had the idea that a lot of the instruction would be covered by the app. So instruction as in explaining the grammar rules, explaining the structure of um, the language, how the language works. Also instruction as in learning new vocabulary would be introduced via the app. And then there would be more time for speaking and practice in class. And so this way um, you can combine the best of the two things, of the um, online resources and the in-class teaching. And I just made four bullet points. This is not an exhaustive list. So first of all, um, you can have in an app or in any online language learning resource, you can have spaced repetition of vocab, for example. So the artificial intelligence here can help um, students to learn vocabulary way better than they could do in class. And in class, they can then use the vocab they learned before. So with the artificial intelligence, for example, um, with the spaced repetition, the system would remember which words you got right and which ones you got wrong, and the ones you got wrong, you would be presented more often in order to learn them. Um, so this is very um, individual for, for the student. And then you can, you can go to class equipped with the vocab you learned. Also, the teachers can recommend lessons to help students keep up. Um, again, for any of you who are teachers, um, if you have classes, even just like five, six, seven students, but if you have classes of 20, 25 students, um, of course, it can happen that, that some students are, are um, yeah, can't keep up with everything that's, that's being taught. And here, the app can help. Mm. Then the in-class exams of this hotel management school, they are based on lessons in the app. So uh, the teachers, what we did with the teachers was we had a hands-on workshop for two days. So we would introduce the app to the teachers so that the teachers feel comfortable with the app. Um, also, some of the teachers were not the um, generation that grew up with the internet. So some of them had never used a language learning app or, or any other online resources for learning. So it was very important to make the teachers comfortable with the app. So we would have a workshop with them to show them the lessons, to show them how to find the content of the app, what they were looking for, because they have their curriculum in mind for French semester one, French level A1, this and that I'm, I want to cover in my class. So where can I find this in the app and how can I use the app with what I'm doing in class? And so they would also do it the other way around. They would um, base their exams and the questions in the exams on the lessons in the app. So they could also let their students know, um, okay, we're going to write an exam next Friday and lessons eight to 15 will be covered in that exam, for example. And then what we have, um, Needless to say, speaking skill is hardest to train, especially with an app. Um, you can have a speech recognition, which is nice, but we know ultimately you um, need to talk to real human. But here, speaking with an app can really help to lower the barrier for beginners. So especially if you ha have students who might, you know, first time abroad, they go to a hotel management school and they feel maybe not that confident, they can first talk talk to their app so they can start pronouncing words in english and french whatever language they are learning and they can can gain confidence in order to yeah to feel confident to then go in class with 20 other people and the teacher and to speak um yes so and that would be um yeah, what the academic director said when we made the case study, 
He said basically what I just told you based on Babel's methods and its contents, our previous classroom language program and our goals, we created a custom learning methodology that combines the best of both worlds and gets students to the next level. Um, so we made a case study after the first semester. We started that whole program last year, September, was when their semester started. And over the course of one semester, um, we found out that 90% of all students actively use the app and some 15,000 lessons were completed within the first semester and we got positive feedback from students and teachers alike. So now, of course, um, well, first of all, the link you see there, I don't know if that probably you can't click it or can you? You can try. If not, you can ping me and I can um, uh, write it in the comments as well if you're interested in that. So there you can find more findings of this case study. But that was a case study after one semester. So the story is far from being over. And now it's really interesting to stay in contact with the teachers and to see what can be done to improve this whole experience from both sides. And now I have the, the side from the EdTech company. And it's really interesting to get the insights from the teachers because those are the ones who are teaching. We are teaching in a way too, but we have the app and we just um, deliver the product. So it's very interesting to see um, what the teachers have to say, what, what problems they um, encountered and how they solved them or how they wish them to be solved. And yeah, basically that's a very short talk because I'm curious to hear your questions. For me, I would be curious to hear if um, there's anyone in the audience who has experiences with that, would like to share this. Um, yeah. So thank you everybody for listening and I'm ready for questions. Yeah, thank, thanks so much. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great case study. And uh, Donna points out those are great results to support blended learning. Um, so if there are other questions, please add them to, um, to the chat and as we go. So um, I have just one follow up to make sure that, that sorry, I trying to get a, a better sense of exactly how the class works. So did they did they use the app at any point in the class or they simply use the app outside the class and then brought, brought things in? They use it mainly outside the class. So of course they will get an introduction in the same way the teachers got, right? This is the app, here you can click, here you can find the courses, here you can find um, whatever. But then the teachers will tell them, okay, now for, for next session you prepare French lesson number three and four um, and then ideally students can prepare to class we all know that this is not always the case right so there is kind of a mixed concept there is some flipped classroom and some just like using the app afterwards for training vocabulary or just going through the things you just did in class okay all right now i was wondering if there was anything that they did with the app in the in the class so that maybe something you know that just does isn't necessary and when, when I, we've been saying app but for some people this can be on the this could be actually on a laptop rather than on a tablet or 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 phone could be on any device right. yeah so yeah, think, yeah you know, of course whether they decide yeah. to use the and, keyboard or not yeah yeah and also the teachers in the workshop i mean that was not limited to the Babel app but also we encourage them if you find online articles or videos online, or there are like Kahoot quizzes, something you can do. This, these are also online resources you can use in your class. And so some of the teachers were really creative and they came up with a lot of good ideas on how to, how to train grandma in a fun way. We all know many people think grandma is not fun, so <laughs> we need to make it fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, it, it does have a reputation that's, uh, that's gotta be, it's, it's gotta be, uh... Covered. So, okay, one, one quick thing to note to everybody that um, Annabelle from our, our team has put the link in the chat. So anyone yeah, can click on the link, please I, I do that. I wanted to do that. Yeah, no, no, we uh, took <laughs> care of you. I'm so bad at <laughs> multitasking and then copying the link, li listening to what you're asking. So, okay, Yeah, yeah, too you. many things to do. So that's why that's why we are, we're happy to help. So that's out there. A uh, couple of questions are coming in. So one is, um, how do you what about language learning in a totally online environment so andreas mentions he's used duolingo what are your thoughts on yeah. on language learning in a totally online environment well it can work um i personally think just purely with an app it's hard as i said mainly the speaking skill right you can do a lot with an app you can learn structures you can learn grammar you 
can learn quite a lot. And especially if you're a total beginner, you can reach level A1, A2. But at some point, you need to go out in the world and to talk to real humans. And um, I mean, if we're talking about totally online, online classes are also an option. It's online, but you would still be talking to people. So I think this one is very, um, very essential. I would say just purely with an app, you can reach a certain level, but you cannot you cannot become as fluent as you, you will be when you're talking to real people. Okay, uh, that's not the same with, you know, if we talked a lot in this conference about real life practice and, and you know, and, and simulation in whatever sense, whether, whether real or through technology. And so, you know, you can imagine a world where, where people can practice realistically, right? It's just not where we are technologically yet, right? So, if, you know, yeah. if I could have a, a real conversation and it would, you know, with, you know, with a with a hologram, strange as that might seem, um, that would you know actually yeah. understand what I'm saying and be able to point out things that I was saying incorrectly. That would that would do it, but that isn't where we are. And so you you know I think what you're yeah. saying is we don't get that real practice without in in person right now, and that's where you drew the lines um, as far as what was online and not, which which totally makes sense um, to me. So we we feel um, so a couple of comments. So um, Imogen um, from our panel mentions that she uses Babel um, online only for Spanish. Um, but she'd already studied in a classroom, so so she's had some practice cool. as well. So that's kind of her her balance there. So she's using the online only because she's had the classroom experience. Um, Andreas agrees with you. He's learning um, Arabic in in Cairo, where he is. Uh, I believe he is now. So um, mm -hmm. lots of <laughs> you know, lots of lots of customers right here uh, for you or already. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's not a, a sales opportunity. They're already your customers. <laughs> uh, Donna points out that they've used blended learning. Um, using SharePoint for short courses, so that, and and then using instructor-led classroom session um, to cover and support online learning, so they get facilitation and discussions outside of that. So in in your classroom sessions, um, I mean it's mostly practice. Is there is there room for discussion as well? You may have covered this uh, in, the in the classroom, classroom session. Yeah. Management school. I can't give you that many insights because I'm not in the classroom. Yeah. Um, I would think so. I mean, we're in, in regular contact with the teachers, but since this just started half, well, almost a year ago, oh my God, where is this year going? <laughs> yeah, um, that's another question. We, we have to have a panel on that and it's gonna take us two hours, yes. <laughs> yeah, so what I can what I can say as of now, it, it depends on the teacher also. There were some teachers who immediately felt comfortable with that approach, others needed a bit more time to get used to, to this whole setup. So we're currently gathering more, more feedback, more insights into what is the best approach and then make sure if, for example, a teacher has a good approach or, or some good idea to how can we make this, like open it for everybody and to, I don't know, gather our, our information somewhere that also others can, can profit from that. Yeah, no, so, so sort of take, mm -hmm. take the, so take, you've got the online piece and then take the best of, of, of every instructor and sort of integrate that somehow as much as you can into the into the classroom experience. Um, yeah. Has it been a challenge to, you know, are these are the instructors generally people who are accustomed to in person only? Has it been a challenge to get them to work in, you know, online and then sort of change the way that they teach uh, in certain ways? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, they were, yeah, just like no, normal in house teachers, class teachers, and they um, I think most of them had extensive teaching experience, but most of them never used an app for learning or teaching. So they were completely new to an app. And this is also a big challenge for us because I mean, for me, you know, I'm, I'm working for the app. So for me, everything there is like super natural, but I know it's not for everybody. So it was also great learning for us to see where we like have to do some, some hands-on work. Um, yeah, so it's a very interesting thing to set up and let's see where this is going. Yeah, no, absolutely. Have you had the teachers go through from the student perspective and see what it's like from the, you know, to, to use the app as a student so that they, they actually have to go through that? Yes, so they have, I mean, they have normal access to the app so they can go through the app as a student and also like do the quizzes and fill in the gaps and all this, but they also get from us transcripts of the contents so that they can easily prepare, right? They, they want to look for whatever grammar point present perfect in English, and then they have a transcript, a PDF, um, or, a, or any kind of document where they can filter, look for present perfect, oh, and which lesson is that? So to make it for them as easy as possible to really use the app. 
Um, because also this is what we want, right? We want them to use the app. And if it gets too difficult, they might just be like, oh, whatever, I, I prepare um, my own thing right. and not use it. And yeah, we feel this has been working pretty well. And we're like, every time there's something new and teachers ask for, oh, could we maybe have this? And then we're like, yeah, okay, maybe we could do that. Let's find a way to, to implement other things, yeah. Do you see this um, evolving? Well, I guess my first question, to, I guess relating to the pandemic, are since since there's a classroom element, have, has that moved to has the classroom element moved to to Zoom or some something similar right now? For the Swiss Hotel Management School, luckily, in a way, their semester was over when the pandemic started, so they had a break, and I think they are now back in class. Um, but yeah, they had a lot of students um, from Asia. And some of them got stuck, as far as I understood. In, they went they went home to see their families and then they couldn't come back. So yeah, but luckily, because the teachers had been used to the app before, it was a bit easier for them to kind of like still give the students something to do and to kind of let the um, learning go on. Because I mean, we can see this now everywhere, like all the schools, that were shut down from one day to the other, a lot of teachers are struggling, I think. And I think here, we were lucky that they had been introduced into our app before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you see this, do you see a version of the course evolving over time, particularly in, in, the, in the current situation where, you know, the, where the classroom part really does move to Zoom and so everything's online, but it's online in different ways. So you maintain the self-directed, self-paced part and still use the Zoom time, you know, it's, it's structured, pretty much as you would the classroom now? Is that something kind of on, on the table at this point or, or mm. could it be? It's a good question. It's a good question. I mean, we do offer um, live classes as well. So we have group classes and we have one-on-one -on -one classes. So the one-on-one -on -one class you can book according to your schedule, right? You look when the teacher is available and you book it. And the group classes, of course, they have like a schedule and you can pick, oh, this one is interesting for me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel I've been working from home for 13 weeks and I feel I do miss even even though this is great and we can do a lot of things. I do miss seeing people in like for real and talking to people for real. And I also think there is um, I think there are some benefits and some things are better in, in presence. So I think in an like even if you hear in the chat, right, I feel more people would write a question and probably they wouldn't ask that question if they had to raise their hand, get the microphone and speak in the microphone. So I think the same goes for a class, right? If you have to speak out loud, maybe you're not likely to do that, but if you can just type something or a question, it might be easier. So in that way, there can be benefits of this whole online thing, but also I think there is a lot of benefit from just being with people. Sure. Sure. No, and it's something like, I mean, especially, in, I mean, you would imagine, in, in a language course, too, where it's, it's about interaction, there's something maybe additional about that and about sort of making sure that you feel 100% natural in, as you're trying to, you know, sort of trying to practice. Um, another question from Donna from the chat, um, kind of getting back to the, the teacher training idea. Um, have you thought mm -hmm. about the teacher, asking the teacher to go through the entire course as a student before they teach so they've really had the full experience that the students would have? Yeah. So when we went there for the hands-on workshop, um, that was in August and the semester started in September. So the teachers had, I think they had six or eight weeks to prepare for their class. And this time was used first, we would go there and introduce them to the app. And then ha they had time to go through all the content themselves and to see yeah, how it feels to, to be on the learner's side. So I would say most of them did that. Okay. And even before the class started, they could give us feedback in like any kind. I, I don't understand this, or, or do you have more lessons on that? Or, yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there interaction with the, um, with the teacher and the students like via the app or sort of during the time when they're not in the classroom sessions? They, they, do they message each other? Is that integrated into the, into the setup in any way? Or just the teachers are there for the not class yet. and the, the students do their part on their own? Yes, I mean, what you can see, so business customers can see the activity of the students. That's why, why we could see how many lessons were done and all this. So the teachers basically can see whether the students are active or not. 
but there is uh, so far we don't have any any interaction implemented like you mentioned like kind of a chat program or something we don't have as of now oh that's just always you know always future things even in, after a successful case study there are always uh, future directions to go in and you know and as the world as the world changes and people's interest and need change as well so there's always a everything is always evolving and, and at a faster pace now than ever and it's great to see what you're doing um all right so i think with that uh, i think we've entered the questions um in the chat and um i've seen your your case study so i really appreciate you're taking the time to be with us we're going to wrap up now, so thanks once again. I hope you can stick around in the chat. There'll be, you know, it can continue the conversation and through the rest of the conference. It's great having you here, and uh, hopefully, we'll get you back next year uh, in New York uh, in, in person. Yes. And uh, you know, I would love to. We'll hope we'll get you there. All right, thanks again. Thank you very much. Great talk and to thanks you. everybody for listening. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.